um as yeah. creators you know we have total control of you know, our music, editing, distribution, style, all that. Um, but one of the things that we can't always choose is our audience. I've been making content on, you know, like Facebook for almost 10 years, and I've seen followers come and go. Um, what has your relationship been like with your audience? Um, so when we first started, we had like 50 listeners at tops for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I, I would say it was like mostly our friends or like their friends. Um, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it's mostly like specifically Arab people with Arab backgrounds and like maybe queer or at least allies, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and now um, now I'm seeing a lot like a wider demographic. We have um, our, our listenership has grown. We have listeners um, all over the world, which is really cool to see. Um, it's not like. You know, it was definitely not anything I could have predicted. Um, like, I've been seeing, like, a larger listenership in Argentina. And, <laughs> yeah, it's just, like, things like that where I'm just like, wow, how did that happen? Yeah, it's like you um, go into so the analytics things. and you're like, there's yeah, people in like, Belgium listening to this? Like, why? Yeah, it's like number two is argentina right now <laughs> what i yeah i, I kind of suspect that's just people's vpns from the middle east though just mm. oh i did not think about that maybe Good that's point. part Good of it point. yeah okay i mean maybe that's possible um regardless i'm glad people in the middle east are listening <laughs> if that's the case um and I would say, like, I have met some really incredible people through the podcast, um, like, just because they, like, certain people listened and they would reach out to us. And I've made some very good friends through it. Um, and that's also not something I was expecting. Um, we've collaborated with some of the listeners as co-hosts, so they'll come on as guest co-hosts sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's fun having, like, bringing people in in that, that context and not like only as guests. So I don't know, just it's, it's been very, it's been very rewarding. We've gone to several events and covered those events through a, a podcast episode. And that's oh also been really fun. Yeah. So that's been fun. Like uh, last year we went to world pride in New York city and we did a couple episodes like covering New York city world pride from, you know, in our little, at least our little bubble of it. And that was really awesome. And we like talked to a guy who was at the Stonewall, uh, you know, the original. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What happened at Stonewall, like things like that, that have, you know, it's this podcast has enabled us to meet people that like, I don't think I would have. I mean, I already have like enough social anxiety and I feel like without having the podcast, I wouldn't like approach people like i mm -hmm. was doing for example in new york i was just like approaching people and saying hey do you want to talk on our podcast oh and that's gosh. that's been really cool um like meeting people that way too yeah and, yeah. and it's sort of a nice way to um yeah. sort of break the ice and, and it gives you an opportunity and it's sort of an excuse to be able to go up to random people and sort of that confidence because you know they're like okay well i'm doing it for the podcast so it's like you know yeah, so it's, me. Fine. it's totally socially acceptable <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's like it's okay yeah. for me to interrupt you right now but i'm doing it for the podcast exactly. it's okay yeah. <laughs> you're eating uh, here's... dinner right now i'm gonna go up to your table <laughs> and here's the odd thing we both of yeah. us are like serious introverts we we both like i'm a little worse on that just because i'm like like if i had to do this podcast solo i would be terrified of reaching out to people <laughs> constantly like we, we like we <laughs> wouldn't need to mm. but um i aside from all the stuff all i said you know about it giving us access giving us a little bubble my favorite part like about the audience was actually going to yellow punk and of course i bring this up every time i can but yeah. because when i was there i was like in a room full of people who I just blended right in with. I wasn't, you know, that weird Arab person, you know, that queer Arab person in an Arab space. Mm -hmm. Not everyone that it wasn't explicitly queer state, but it was like, holy crap, I'm in a room and I don't stand out. And, you know, I am this six one trans woman who dresses like she's 18 with t-shirts and jeans all the time. And I don't stand out. And I kind of love that. Do you want to explain yellow punk? 
Oh, uh, Yellow Punk is this uh, Swana, which is Swana Festival, like music, arts, and performance festival. It's like anyone from like a Middle Eastern background or not, I mean, who even associate with, who wants to come and put, show their art, do spoken word, do dance, do poetry, you know, put, play some music. It's just three days of that. And oh. we take we take over this art venue. And then we also take over, I think it was Johnny Brenda's for the last two times. It, for the that, it reminds me of um, like Afropunk. Afropunk has sort of a similar yeah. thing, right? Yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, or it's like a similar concept, concept to like, yeah. like sort of a music cultural festival and yeah yeah and for like yeah like aimed at a specific demographic yeah, yeah, yeah. celebrating a specific demographic uh, just for anyone listening who hasn't heard the term swana um it's southwest asian north african and um people uh, you know descending from that region are trying to like trying to use Swana more than Middle Eastern um, whenever mm. possible, just because like Middle Eastern is um, it's uh, like from a Western perspective, like, yeah, 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 because calling it the Middle East is like from a Western perspective. So when Ellie says Swana, that's what uh, she's referring to. It's it's like interchangeable still with Middle East, but um, it's yeah, like you, you can't stop using Middle East because it's the term like anyone who talks about the subject already knows and people who yeah. don't yeah. you know yeah that's Thank actually really um, that's actually really cool to know because i i did a video um a couple months ago and i was talking about um the to map and it was this map that was used um, by colonizers to essentially um talk about how they um positioned people who were in africa and people who were in asia and they you know, only knew of the world as three parts, either the European part, the African part, and then the Asian part. And so they always just designated that area as Middle yeah. East because he just thought that it was just this whole giant section. And so I'm, oh. that's pretty cool that you, you oh, told wow. me about this because I didn't know that that word, that term was Well, preferred. it's basically the Middle yeah. East from Rome. There's like the East, which is which was considered in Rome, China. Then there was like the Near East, which was um constantinople uh, anatolia and then you know just it just kind of kept going like that out of history it was just the middle east between rome and china yeah i think yeah. as as an you know i know for a lot of asian americans and asians there's always that debate of trying to figure out how you identify yourself first you're like okay first we're api then we're asian american then we don't want to deal with asians because um, east asians are different than south East Asians and so oh, I yeah, yeah, it, yeah. There, there's all that